Hello and welcome to Living Life. My favorite time of the year is Christmas. And it's not because of the presents or the decorations or even the time with family, even though those are all great things. I love Christmas most because it's the message of Christmas that touched my heart many years ago and first opened my eyes to begin to understand, even in a small way, the great love that God has for us by sending his son, Jesus Christ, to earth. Since that time, it's been an incredible journey to learn and experience more of God's love every day. And it just multiplies like crazy at Christmas time. It's because of this that I find it hard when people don't stop or even slow down at Christmas time. In my heart, there are so many reasons to step back from the everyday grind, if even for a moment, to recognize the difference that Christmas makes every day in our lives. In our text for today, God enters the life of a young lady, a girl, really, and tells her how she is part of the promises that God has made for his people, beginning all the way back in Genesis chapter 3, after the sin of Adam and Eve. God made a promise to restore and redeem his people and to destroy sin and death forever. All this was coming true, and in the midst of all of this, God is going to do the impossible. He's actually going to do God-sized things that only he can do. And it proves to us more than anything that nothing is impossible to God. Let's look at our text for today. Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be barren is in her sixth month. For nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. As we're studying the Gospel of Luke, we've seen the angel Gabriel bring one woman great joy with news that in her barrenness and in her old age, she would have a baby. This woman, Elizabeth, is now six months pregnant, and her husband, Zechariah, had been unable to speak a word to her in all of this time. He was mute as a punishment for his unbelief. But Elizabeth's circumstances had put a smile on her face and a deep sense of relief. Her social standing had changed. She was no longer seen by the community as being under divine punishment. The reproach of childlessness had been kindly removed by God. And the angel Gabriel had previously come from the presence of God. And at this time, he comes to a young girl, a nobody in a nothing town in the middle of nowhere. This particularly young Jewish peasant girl, probably only around 13 years of age, was going about her business preparing for her upcoming marriage to a young man called Joseph. Besides her age, 
the fact that she was single and a teenager in a place like Nazareth, the most important fact about her is that she is a virgin. God broke into her world uninvited, and it's amazing that he did so because there's nothing remarkable or unusual about her. The sovereign God, the creator of the universe, came into Mary's life uninvited, unsought, and burdened her with blessing. His action in her life was inconvenient and a bit embarrassing, but this was part of his wise and gracious plan for her. Often God's intrusion into our lives is inconvenient, but it's always righteous, it's always loving, and it's always good. And so God, according to his plans, came into Mary's life with news about a baby that she would bear. Almighty God, in devising the plan of redemption, in which Jesus would come to earth as a human being in order to live and die and rise again. And he needed to be born of a woman in order for him to be fully like us in every way. And for this purpose, God chose Mary. Not because of anything special about her, but simply because she was willing to give birth to the Messiah. There was nothing special about Mary. She lacked everything that would speak of greatness. And that's the very point. She was quite ordinary. Mary was simply the recipient of God's unusual and unique grace. Jesus had to be born. And it was Mary who was chosen. Yes, Mary did respond well to the news of the angel. She showed such great courage and humility to simply say, I'm the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. We should be challenged by her example and humbled by her obedience. I love the fact that God decided to give her as further proof of his ability to do the impossible, a look at what he had done for her cousin, Elizabeth, in giving her a child in her old age. If anyone could relate to Mary in her condition and her circumstances, it would be Elizabeth. Is God not kind to remind us when we face all kinds of obstacles, all kinds of frustrations in our life, that nothing is impossible with him? We who live in a broken world need to be encouraged by God, do we not? That nothing is impossible with him. We can, he can cause barren women to bear children. He can cause a virgin to conceive and to bear a child. He can cause the unemployed to become employed. And those at odds with one another to be reconciled. God can bring marriage partners our way and get us through exams, help us pay off economic debts, and he can heal diseases. Notice some of the things that the angel said about Mary, about the baby that she would bring into this world. Just recognizing these truths should bring us to a place of worshiping at the feet of Jesus. The angel said that his name would be Jesus. And that name literally means God saves because he would save his people from their sins. That's the reason that Jesus came. He came to save us from our sins. Everything else takes a distant second place to that fact. Gabriel said that Jesus will be great. He would be the greatness of God in the flesh of man. We follow Jesus because he's the very greatness of God. If we were to come up with a script of a savior sent into the world, how many of us would begin our tale with Jesus being born in a stable and growing up with human parents. Would we think of God himself as being formed inside one of his own creatures, willing to humble himself as if he was simply another part of that creation? That's why he's so amazing. He would be the son of the most high, both the son of man and the son of God. He's absolutely unique. He would rule in majesty and there would be no end to his kingdom. We can live in a broken world because of God's grace to us, we can be introduced to the Savior who loves us and who died for us and who understands everything that we go through because he went through it too.
Mary gives me a great understanding of the connection between God saying, is anything impossible for God? And I am your servant. Let it be to me as you have said. It's one thing to know that God is mighty and all knowing, but it's another thing to be able to be obedient and humble ourselves to the point of surrendering our lives to him completely as Mary did. Mary had no way of knowing what the next months and years held for her, but she was at the very least willing to take a first step of faith and say, let it be to me as you have said. How about you today? What are the God-sized things in your life that you have to surrender to him and allow him to handle? What is keeping you from being completely obedient so that you can completely give your everything to him? holding nothing back. Let me encourage you today. Let go of the things that are beyond your control and have the courage to say, I believe. Those two small words can save you a lot of heartache and can bring such an abundance of blessing into your life. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you are the one who is in control. You are the one who has things planned in our lives And we just need to be able to come to the point where in our own lives we say, I believe. Let it be to me as you have said. We ask for that willingness to be obedient and and humble before you, knowing that you bless us so much already and want to bless us so much more. We thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen.